grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like you and me. Once was lost, but now I'm found, and now I have the victory. Cause I've seen the highest mountain, I felt the valleys low. Through it all, you were there, and you never let me go. Stay silent, I'll lift up my praise. Yeah. How my ending you did change. You said, you said. Great! 
Jesus, there's no one like him, there's none beside him. He's worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You're so worthy, Jesus. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Yes. Where we proclaim your name. This is a house of are full of faith oh my. you have our full attention you have the final say come and lift up come alive in the name of Jesus come alive in the name of Jesus this is our
that's found in the name of Jesus and I don't know what you may have came in here with or what you may have been going through but I know that our God is a provider and he's a healer and all you got to do is ask him so can you just lift your hands all across the room and can you just begin to just worship him and tell him your needs and can you just begin to glorify him Jesus we worship you and we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise and God, we thank you for your ultimate sacrifice that you died so that we may have life. And we're going to give you glory. And we're going to give you praise, Jesus. Us. 
to no guilt, no shame, all my stains erased, there is no bondage, every chain is broken, every chain is broken. Every chain is broken yeah. See there is no bondage Shall we sing that? Every chain is broken There is no bondage Jesus our hearts are Say no fear, no guilt, no shame, no shame. All oh, my stains erased. There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. Hallelujah. You have won. Victory. Yes, God. Yes, Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Sing, death could, death could not hold you down. You are the reason King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see that. See that in majesty. You are, you are. You are the reason King. Can you just let out a shout of praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Oh, come on, all over the house, can you just begin to give him some glory and some honor? He's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. Come on, come on. Lift your voice up to the Lord and give him some glory and give him some honor. know that there's no one like Jesus there's no one like our God oh come on I had five people how many know there's no one like Jesus we're so grateful that you're here that you've chosen to attend this church on Easter Sunday so that we can lift up a God that gave his life so that we may have life the Bible says that he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Why don't you look to your neighbor and tell him it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. And then look to your other neighbor and say, hey, you look good, you smell good. And you can make your way back to your seats. We're so glad that you're in the house of the Lord. At this moment, if you can turn your attention to the screen. Thank you so much for being here. Each block of time, significant. Every person in human event cascading in perfect synchronization. In a schematic only understood by the master architect. Seconds, minutes, hours. Time unfolds, 
one moment flowing into the next. No one is independent. Nothing is disconnected. All follows the omniscience of divine design. When time felt like bondage, it only served the whims of his dominion. On the heels of a curse, a promise was released. Darkness and death, sin and pain, and all surrender to salvation and resurrection. This promise could not be curtailed by hell nor its means. Sin's imprisonment became our freedom. Your motion, your rhythm, your cadence, your flow. Your moves are integral and pivotal to the process. A role of eternal significance, that's what you play. Your life is not an unrelated experience. There is a space reserved only for you. The question is not do you matter, but where do you matter? Hold the line, hear your calling, make your move. You could be this. They killed the conductor. They crucified him, but they could not stop the symphony. No matter the chaos in your life, what is next is what matters. What you do and where you go from here, that's what matters. Because life is about your next move, your next note, your next decision. And my question is simple. Are you ready for what's next? You must possess great respect for the past. But we are people of the moment. And where you have come from gives insight to what your path can become. But remember, you're here now. Do your best to be present completely in this moment. Simultaneously, get ready to move forward to what is next. Because doing your best now prepares you for the best next. I, I, I don't know where I'm going next. But I guarantee this. It will not be boring. No one knows exactly what's next. But I know who's with me. As I walk into. What's next. And I know. It will be worked for my good. Every next level in your life demands a new version of you. A you who has decided to believe differently and think expectantly. Babe Ruth said it this way. Every strike brings me closer to the next home run. Keep swinging. Keep believing. And I would like to challenge you that when you hear no, think next. It didn't work out. Next. You were turned down. Next. You missed the opportunity. Next. You didn't get the raise. Next. God didn't want me to do that. Next. Why don't you just shout next? Next. You see, if I had stopped when others said no, I would have missed my miracle. Because you cannot change the past. But God can change your perspective. You intended to harm me. That's Genesis chapter 50 and 20. Joseph said, you intended to harm me. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position because of what's next. So that I was positioned properly for what's coming later. You tried to harm me. Some even harmed themselves. The situation came to limit me, to harm me. 
But can you change that word harm? Can, can you change the harm? I, I would say, of course you can. By what comes next. The harm could become harmony. And God is the one that takes all the things and brings them into harmony. Joseph said, you meant to harm me. But God used all of it. This moment, this place, this position. So stop allowing what happened to you to regulate what you believe about moving forward. I, I'm, I don't really play the piano, but I'm going to show EJ something here. So EJ, let me help you. I'm going to give you a little. Just stay right there. Stay right there. Okay. Okay. This, this EJ is middle C. Okay. That's D, that's E, that's F, right? Am I right? Yeah. C. C and F go together. Okay, so you just remember that, okay? Just play that, play that one singular note, C, for a minute, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Just play that one note for a minute. Just C, just, 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 yeah, yeah, just play it for me, yeah. Play. So that single note, play a little louder, play it for me, keep playing. That single note in isolation, yeah? Is it good or is it bad? It just is. It's middle C. There's just nothing terrible about middle C. But whether middle C is good or bad, okay? Let's play middle C. And let's play something in discord to middle C. One other note. Ready? Oh, okay, that's, that's bad. So then middle C must be bad, right? Now, play middle C. Now, and I'll play that discord note. So that's C and what? E. C and E. C and D. That's C and D. So play C and D. Now play them together. Now play C. And now play F. Now play those together. Did you hear the harmony? So C by itself in isolation is neither good nor bad. But C when it's played with the wrong note in discord becomes bad. But C when it's played with F, do it for me. Listen, whether where you're at right now is good or bad is determined by what's next. Well, I feel the Spirit trying to tell someone right now, you might be interpreting the details wrongly because, listen, where you're at may feel a little uncomfortable, but whether it's wrong or right is really determined by what's coming next. They put him on a cross, and it looked bad. It looked like it couldn't get any worse, that hell had won. But listen, the cross and what happened on the cross, whether it's good or bad, was not determined until he got out of a grave three days later. And when the cross was combined with resurrection, it became incredible. So I, I'm challenging someone right now. Stop trying to determine whether the moment you're in is good or bad. And focusing on this moment, why don't you put your attention on what's next? Because if you can put your attention on what's next, you can change where you are right now into something better. Am I making sense with you? It's only bad when it's combined with what's coming next. Same note. Play it again for me. Play C. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put some sustain on it. There you go. Now. Yeah, I got to help you. Come on. Dad. Now put F with it. Now put a whole chord with it. You see, I don't really know if it's bad until I move into the next moment. But we're spending so much time Focusing and conversing upon what is the now. And you can't control much of what's happening in your life. You cannot erase what you did. You cannot erase what happened. You cannot go back. But perhaps if you could pair a good move with the bad move, something beautiful would emerge in your life. 
So let's stop focusing on the individualistic events of our current situation. And let's put it together with something good. Right now this morning, someone, you could make a decision that would shift your destiny and change your progress. Joseph said, you meant to harm me. Put that 50 and 20 on the board again. You meant to harm me. But God put it with another note. God brought me into the position so I could save lives of many people. So I had to go through that to get to this. And if I had have dwelt on the singular notes of dissatisfaction, discord, and frustration, I would never be playing the tune God intended me to play. The next move, the next decision, the next note that you play are incredibly important to playing the song God has always written for your life. Because it's the next note that God wants to talk to you about. It's the next choice. Are are you going to stay stuck? Now go back to just see. Are you going to go stay here forever? Are you going to stay stuck on the singular events of your past forever? Just keep playing it for me. But why don't you make a choice today on Easter Sunday 2024 what the next note's going to be? I understand that people broke your heart. That's what broken hearted people do. Hurting people hurt people. And they may have meant to harm you. But God wants to put it into harmony. All things work together for the good of them that do love the Lord and called according to his purpose and that keep his commandments. So I ask every visitor, every guest, every member, what's your next note going to be? Because by the end of this year, your life could be singing a different story. Because it really is about the next note. note. So come off the cross. Come out of the grave. Escape the failure. Repent and turn back to him. He brought you to this moment for me to tell you he's the author and the finisher. And what is your next move? What will it be? I I know what mine is. You may have thought of giving up, but as for me and my house, we we, we will serve the Lord. You, You may have contemplated quitting and walking away and throwing in the towel and thought you weren't worthy. I'm just going to step back and say, God, play the note that you know is best for me. Just, just move toward God today. Don't leave what is next to chance, to fate, to luck, or to your intelligence alone. But discover today what the next note needs to be. What's next? That's the question. You have to ask it about the social climate in which we're immersed. What's next? They disallowed any of the National Guardsmen and their children to write any scriptural sayings or emblems on any of the eggs that they would roll at the White House today. They were not allowed to have any religious symbols. And yet simultaneously, Mr. Biden declared today a day of visibility for transgenderism. Even though we already have a day honoring transgender people, he said Sunday, Easter, March 31st is Transgender Visibility Day. What's next? I can tell you that this world's next will be more evil, more sin, more debauchery, more immorality, more confusion, more race baiting, more anger, more violence, more hatred. But I wonder, is there a Christian in the house that says my next will be one of harmony, one of love, one of mercy, one of grace, one of forgiveness, one of belief, one of commitment. My next note will not be steered by the discord around me, but my next move will move into harmony with the word of God. Luke 24 and 5, it says it this way. And they were afraid and bowed down to their faces to the earth. And they said unto him, why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here, but he is risen. 
Remember how he spake to you when he was yet in Galilee. He said, I told you what was coming next. But you couldn't hear. And heaven asked a question of three women. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? You have to look for what is next. Not what has happened. You have to stop searching where he was. And look for where he's going to be. Because Jesus Christ had moved beyond the resurrection. Moved beyond the sacrifice into the fulfillment of prophecy. And God wants to reveal the same thing in your life. For you to move beyond your pain into your purpose. Beyond the disappointment into your destiny. God is doing something new. And the next is already beginning. Do you sense it? Can you feel it? Or are you fixated on the current situation that you can't look into what is next? Thomas was unsure he believed anymore. Peter was cussing. Judas hung himself. And the rest of the disciples had locked themselves behind closed doors, afraid for their life. But three women, three women who followed Jesus, each for their own motivation, Gratitude was that synonymous thread that held them together. You know, with grateful people, you don't have to push them to worship. Grateful people, you don't have to even have great singers or great music or great lights or a great stage. They're just grateful for the presence of God and they will worship God intensely no matter what they're going through or what's happening in their life. Because when they think about what God did for them... He saved them. He delivered them. He transformed them. Something personal that they can't really even talk about. There comes a time in your life when you have to stop mourning. And God can speak to you as he did to Samuel who loved Saul. And when God said anoint David, the scripture said that Samuel was grieved for Saul. But God can tell you like he did Samuel, stop mourning, stop crying and anoint the next one. Huh? You Listen, you have to be ready for your next move. And could it be possible you're looking for the right thing but in the wrong place? The angel did not fault them for looking for Jesus. The angel reprimanded them for looking too low. Why do you seek the living among the dead? So my question is simple. Is your search for God too low? Is your expectation too small? Is past experience limiting your future expectation? And there is a high cost to low level thinking. Renounce small faith. Reject low assumptions because low expectations are a faith trap. We shrink away from God's goodness and God's power. We shrink down and condense our prayers. And when God comes to us, he always brings more than we expect. But listen, our expectations are so small, but God's gifts are so large. We ask for a drop and God pours an ocean for a morsel and he spreads a feast. Don't be caught up in what is supposed to happen that you cheat yourself and abort the possibility of what can happen. Happen. So often we return in our expression to God to where we met Him last, to what we thought of Him last, but God has moved on. Because he is a God of the next, not simply a God of the now. He is a God that is taking us into a future that is filled with promise and power and anointing. And I don't want to be fixated. Uh, listen, there's so many Christians today that they just keep going back to what has happened before, where God was. But your relationship with God must keep increasing. We go to where he used to be. We talk about what he used to do. We dwell on how he used to bless and and we keep going to the spot that we last saw God, but not me. I want what's next. I want the next move, the next note, the next step. He's not there anymore, well, ladies. He is risen. He's come out of the grave. What's next matters. So think of it. Jesus is gone. Why are the angels still there? Why are the angels guarding an empty tomb? 
Why are they stationed at a grave that has no body? I believe that the angels stayed around so that when the women showed up, they would not misunderstand what they saw. There would be no fear. For vandals and thieves had not taken the stone away. They had not stolen the body. It was not some religious manipulation. But the angels remained to speak a word of alignment and direction. To challenge these women to look beyond the past and look into a bright future. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? We have to look beyond our current disappointments, our current frustrations. Because listen, disappointment will fuel discontentment and what you see in the now can confuse your tomorrow when you see the surface only it will distort the story and if you take too much account into the visible you will misinterpret God's purpose in the situation because often what looks like in the beginning is not what God has planned for later it's strange times But don't be afraid. This is not a robbery. It's not the enemy. It's not the devil. The enemy thought he won. But God had this sovereign surprise up his sleeve. And if the enemy, the writer said, would have known that crucifying him would have released the purpose and the plan of God, he would have never crucified him. But God was no longer dead. He was no longer in the grave. He had moved to the next level. I pray that there is a release of faith in this house that you can see more possibility. The Lord brought you here on this Easter so I could tell you it's what next matters. What's next after your failure? What's next after the divorce? What's What's next after the cross? What's next after the death? What's next after the mourning? What's next after the grief? What's next after the failures? What is next? I wish someone in this house could understand what I'm preaching and you could align your heart with there's just another note for me. There's another place. Why? Do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you keep going back to the place of your pain when God's trying to take you into potential? Stop memorializing what you lost. No more living in yesterday. God wants to exceed your past experiences. You cannot step into your future living in the tomb of your past. Let it go. Release it. Let the Spirit resurrect you. I'll quote it again. Why do you seek amongst the living for the dead? Paul said it this way. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I won't say I've already achieved Philippians 3 and 12 or that I've reached perfection, but I press, I push, I move to possess that perfection for with which Christ first possessed me. I'm moving on to another level for I'm going to focus on this one thing I will forget the things that are behind me I will not focus on what happened to me but I will press on to believe for what's coming is better than where I've been and I know we apply that to a bad past but how about believing to see God supersede victories supersede levels we've been in how about believing that the best is in front of us I never want my experiences to limit God whether they're good or they're bad so I refuse to build my spiritual identity on the past and what God did yesterday show me what's next somebody get up out of the grave get up out of disappointment make up your mind move on touch somebody and say something's about to happen In your marriage, in your money, in your ministry, in your future, in your emotions, in your life, in your family, in your spirit, in your soul. Something. But it can't happen if you keep going back to the tomb. It can't happen if you keep memorializing your pain, your loss, and your grief. What God is about to do in your life will not happen in a dead place. A place filled with regret. A place filled with anger. A place filled with grief. The next level will not be thinking filled with dead thinking people. With dead ideas. 
and dead creativity. But the next level will be filled with someone whose eyes have gotten off their grief and have elevated their vision to a resurrected Christ. I'm here to tell someone Jesus is in this house to resurrect your future. Why don't you raise your hands and let God speak to you on this Easter morning. I don't know. Anybody want to get up? Anybody want to get up? If you keep getting the same results, it's not a new church you need. It's not a new family you need. It's a new you. Get out of the grave. Get up again. It's not a new house. It's not a new job. It's not a new location. It's not a new career. It's a new you. Get up. Get up. If you're fighting the same grief you've been fighting for years, get up. Stop trying to fix what was. God's moved on. You're trying to aromatize a stinky place. You've been trying to freshen up something that's decomposing. You're trying to make something dead feel like it's alive. But you can't do it. You're putting all your passion, your power, and your finances into old things rather than new things. You don't need to put any more resources on what was. You need to focus on what's next. Because Jesus Christ has already come out of the grave and there's another level. He is risen. And if God has risen, you are called to rise. They fell to the ground. And the angel said, get up. Why are you laying on the ground? He is not here. You're looking for the living among the dead. Some of you have been crouched down too long with your head in despair and depression. And you're looking in holes and dungeons trying to find purpose why don't you lift up your eyes to the hills from whence cometh your help (laughs) Colossians 3 and 1 says it this way if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above (sighs) maybe you ought to understand The scripture's telling you, focus on the good things. Focus on the holy things. Focus on the healthy things. Focus on the best things. So instead of allowing your pain to pull you in to a mode of grief and victimhood, perhaps you should step back and make up in your mind. You're going to walk by faith rather than by your feelings. You're going to believe in God. You're going to trust God. You're not going to complain. You're just going to keep praying. You don't even need to spend time talking to God if you're going to talk to everybody else. No wonder God ain't talking to you. You value people's opinions more than you value God's. And a person in this house is going to make your situation different. You need to look to what's next from God. The angel asked the women, why are you looking for something living in a dead place? They did not understand that Christ had moved beyond where he was. Let's move into the next level of God's power. Touch your neighbor, say, leave the tomb behind. Christ is risen. Stop trying to fix what was. God's doing something new. I declare a shift in your life. Movement in your life. A change in your self-image in the name of Jesus. A change in your insecurities. uh, And a change uh, in your self-adversity. Change your perspective. What was meant to harm me? became harmony because he had a plan for me but when I interpret every situation through a small lens they sound out of place boring frustrating just one but when I pair it with a cord you ready amazing grace how sweet that makes sense does it because what I'm trying to sing and the notes aren't matching but when we get it together something changes so perhaps the perspective that God's speaking to you about today is understand that taken by itself the cross seemed like failure but when you pair it with the resurrection everything about that death and that pain 
changed. Let's watch this. Let's show them the notes. Just stop for a second, EJ. Let's sing it. Say, amazing grace. You ready? Sing it out, EJ. You got a mic there? Nope. Here you go. Sing it. Watch. I want to illustrate something, okay? You ready? Go, sing. Amazing grace. How sweet. Next note. That. Next note. You see how all the notes go together? Every one of you has a different song and a different style. You're not going to sing it like EJ sings it. You're not going to sing it like I sing it. It's going to play out differently in your life. I was blind, but now I see. Praise God. Praise God. Ready? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You got to follow the notes. Praise God. Praise God. Because our notes put together make a song. It's what next that determines whether it's good or bad. Someone in this house needs to hear it. You thought what was meant for evil and harm would destroy your family. But God says, I want to turn it into harmony. And when you're done singing, you're going to say, look what the Lord has done for me. Look, look at the song my life has created. Look at the music the Spirit's been playing. You thought the enemy was winning. I'm just telling you the next move determines whether it's evil or good. Raise your hands all over this house and let the Spirit cover you right now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. So you can stay. You can focus on the present and how frustrated and disillusioned you are by it. You can dwell on the past and the things that have happened and the difficulties, or you can choose today. Today, my focus is on what's next because it is what's next that determines victory and freedom in my life and whether it is good or bad. Your hands are raised, your hearts are open. Stand to your feet with me. You see, what this sermon is really about today is callings, purpose, anointings, future. This sermon is about, for you, what is next in your spirit, in your worship, in your attitude, in your life. What's next? You say, but pastor, you don't know how painful it's been. You, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know how difficult this life has been. The note you play next can change everything. The worship you give him next can shift the reality. The prayers you pray next can change the situation and make it harmonious. I know you've been through trouble. Life is short and filled with trouble. But can you play the right next note? That's the question. And I know this, we can't by ourselves. We can't play the next note correctly. So if you're here and you're willing like me to say, God, let the next note play in me. 
I wanna play what you know I should play. I wanna move and decide what you know I should decide. If that's you, I want you to walk to this altar right now and say, Lord, here I come. I'm coming because I wanna play the right note next. I wanna say the right words next. I wanna make the right decision next. I wanna worship the correct way next. Because it's what's next that matters. Oh, that's beautiful. Lord, I'm praying right now that every person in this house would make a decision from the back to the front to play the right note next, to get in symphony and harmony with you and your directives. Don't be led by your choices or your decisions without God's intervention and wisdom. So across this house, would you tell him, I need you, God. On this resurrection day, I need you. Because I've been looking for the living amongst the dead. I've been looking too low. My life's been out of harmony. It, it's, it's been in discord and confusion. So Lord, lead me into what's next right now. Lead me into what's next. Your hands are raised and your hearts are open. You're praying from the back to the front. With your own words, would you confess to him that you need his help? With your own words, would you tell him that you need his help choosing what is the next decision? Come on, that's beautiful. I can't do this without your wisdom, God. I can't do this because I, I've been interpreting it correctly. I've been looking through a lens of frustration and anger. I, I've allowed my past to intrude on my future. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I got to know what's next, God. Some of you need to make a decision right now, next. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus today because that's what's next. Others need to repent of your sins. That's what's next. Others need to give your heart to him. That's what's next. Others need to ask forgiveness of God and others. That's what's next. Lord, I'm praying right now you'd speak to someone in this house about their next move. In the name of Jesus. Why don't you gently put your hand on people all around this auditorium. And just maybe take them by the hand or put your hand on their shoulder or whatever you feel. And pray that God will begin to talk to them about the next place, the next move, the next decision. The next choice. Right now, Jesus. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Forgive our sins, God. Give us courage to forgive others on resurrection day. Let something new be created right now. On this day, in this moment, start something new and fresh and over. Begin again something powerful. We choose you. We choose life. Lord, we're no longer going to dwell and look amongst the dead for a living God. I'm making the right choices and I'm making the right moves right now. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm choosing life. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You're praying over each other in this house right now. God, I got to choose the right next, the right moment, the right decision, the right choice. I can't do this without you, God. Forgive my confusion and my despair. Forgive me, Lord, huh, for thinking wrong and believing wrong and acting wrong. Oh, God, I got to choose next. I've been choosing the wrong next. I've been choosing it with my ideas and my processes and my ways. But God, I'm asking you right now to work in this house to work in this house. God, I'm going to choose you next on this resurrection day. I'm choosing you, God, in the name of Jesus. That's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, all over this place. Love him right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm choosing you right now, God. This next move determines the good, the bad. This next choice determines it in the name of Jesus.
What you choose next matters. I was lost. What you choose I next matters. Lying. It's fundamental I to your direction. I running out of time. And sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you had me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. You left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe. You broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank You're you, worshiping all over this Jesus, house right now. You You're have surrendering to the presence of the Lord. Life. Hallelujah. You brought me from the darkness into glory. took my place you laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and now death has no sting and life has no end for i have been transformed by the blood
Thank you, Jesus. We raise our hands to you this last time, God, in worship and surrender. We don't know what to do next, God, but you know what our next note should be. What our next step, our next move. You know the flow that you created for us when you made us. So Lord, put us in motion. Cover us with your spirit. Let us make the right decisions and the right choices right now. I pray stir someone. Someone who is at a crossroads. Someone who is praying and choosing and asking and questioning. God, give us your best as we offer you our best. So Lord, we surrender. And we make this next move. This next choice. We choose you. In a day of uncertainty, we choose you. In a day of fear, we choose you. With your hands raised, tell him across this house, you are my next move, God. You are my next move. There's a deep touch of the Spirit in this house right now. Love him. From the back to the front, love him right now. You are my next move, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's something to share the wonder-working power of the blood. The blood. It the sons and daughters. You're singing it right now.
sing it one more time, say Glory to His name. Oh.